This is our key. Actin will be represented by an orange bead. Myosin will be represented by a red skittle as well as red clay. Tropomyosin will be represented by a pink bead. Troponin complex will be re represented by a green bead. ADP, ATP will be represented by a yellow bead. Acetylcholine will be represented by a purple bead. Acetylcholine receptors will be represented by a purple straw. Acetylcholine esterase will be represented by a brown or gold gummy bear. Sodium and potassium will be represented by black beads. Calciquestrin will be represented by a blue bead. And calcium will be represented by white mentos. This is a sarcomere. A sarcomere is the basic functional unit of striated muscle. It is made up of Z discs, I bands, A band, H band, and an M line. It is made up of myofilaments and myofibrils. Action potential arrives at the synaptic knob opening the calcium channels. Calcium enters the membrane, <laughs> pushing the synaptic vesicles that are filled with acetylcholine towards the membrane of the synaptic knob. Yeah. Exocytosis causes the acetylcholine to be released from the synaptic knob into the synaptic plaque. Acetylcholine is picked up by the receptors on the motor endpoints of the skeletal muscle. Sodium and potassium channels open allowing sodium ions to enter into the muscle fibers. An increase in positive ions inside the muscle cell cause an action potential on the sacrolemma. So after the action potential is released by the sodium ions, it travels down the sarcolemma, which is basically the membrane of the muscle cell. Um, here I have a, what we would call a fascicle. A fascicle is many different um, myofilaments, or myofibers. Um, myofibers are what make up the muscles. And each myofiber is also made up of a myofibril, which we represented with this. And all of these together make up a fascicle. And each fascicle is surrounded by a sarcomere, which is the muscle, or sarcolemma, which is the, um, the cell membrane of the muscle cell. And so the action potential travels down here, and it, down the sarcolemma, and it enters into a T-tubule. And when it enters the T-tubule, it stimulates the release of calcium in the terminal cisternae, which is featured here and here, of the sarcoplasmic rect reticulum. Um, it has already been stored here by calciquestrin, and so when the action potential comes down the sarcolemma into the T-tubule, it releases these calcium ions and sends them down the T-tubule and down to where they flood over the thin filaments, which are represented here. So they flood over the thin filaments and pull off the tropomyosin which is covering the actin sites. So it pulls off the tropomyosin and releases and allows the myosin head of the thick filament to attach to the actin sites, which are now uncovered, thanks to the calcium. Um, when the high energy myosin head leaps up to bind with the actin site, um, that is how we get, or sorry, that is, that is what forms a cross bridge between the two. And then the myosin head pivots to the low energy state, which is down. And that is when it releases ADP. Um, ADP is then released, putting it back in the low energy state. And what we have is called a power stroke, which is when the thin filaments get, get pushed this way by the myosin head. And ATP then binds to the myosin head, causing the head to break free. Um, and that's when myosin, that's when the ATP is converted into ADP and potassium. And then calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, um, which is then attached to calciquestrin, allowing the tropomyosin to come back 
and recover the actin sites, uh, which allows the muscle to relax. Mitochondria produces energy for the cell to use during muscle contractions called ATP.